Hello. Today's topic is about clinical anatomy of superior vena cava. The superior vena cava or the SVC is a large vein with a diameter of up to 2 cm and a length of approximately 7 cm. It is also valve-less vein that carries venous blood, from the head, neck, both upper limbs and from structures within the thorax and returns it to the right atrium. This picture shows the formation of the superior vena cava. Focus on the right side as this part is much easier. If you can understand the right side, the left side is similar. The superior vena cava arises from the union of the left and right brachiocephalic veins, which drains the head, neck, and upper limbs posterior to the first right costal cartilage. At the level of T4, the superior vena cava receives the azagous vein, which drains the upper lumbar region and thoracic wall. The SVC also receives tributaries from several minor vein groups that are mediastinal veins, esophageal veins, and pericardial veins. It then descends vertically through the superior mediastinum, behind the intercostal spaces and to the right of the aorta and trachea. At the level of the second costal cartilage, the SVC enters the middle mediastinum and becomes surrounded by the fibrous pericardium. It terminates by emptying into the superior aspect of the right atrium at the level of the third costal cartilage. I will now talk about the anatomical relationships of the superior vena cava. During my studies, I will divide into four or six areas depending on the clinical importance which are right, left, anterior, posterior, superior and inferior. Now we will just look at four important sides that are right, left, anterior and posterior. We will start with left side and followed by right side, anterior and posterior. On the left side of the SVC is the brachiocephalic artery and the ascending aorta. On the right side is the right phrenic nerve with accompanying vessels, the right pleura and the upper lobe of the right lung. Now for anterior and posterior. Anterior to the SVC are the chest wall, thymus, internal thoracic vessels and the anterior margin of the right lung and pleura. Posterior to the SVC is the trachea, right vagus nerve and the root of the right lung. The portion of the SVC within the pericardium is covered by the serous layer of the pericardial membrane. Since the superior vena cava is formed by the union of left and right brachiocephalic veins, and the brachiocephalic is formed by the internal jugular and subclavian veins, we can visualize the right internal jugular venous pulse which represents the pressure in the right atrium. This is called as jugular venous pressure or JVP. To examine it, patient must be at 45 degrees angle with head slightly turned towards left. The JVP pulsation can be identified between the two heads of sternocleidomastoid muscles. Signs of raised JVP include SVC obstruction, pulmonary hypertension and right-sided heart failure. Another important clinical condition is superior vena cava obstruction. It can occur either due to external compression or from an occlusion within the vessel lumen itself. The most common cause obstruction is malignancy, like lung cancer, lymphoma, or metastatic disease. The obstruction interrupts venous return and can lead to swelling in the neck, face, and upper limbs. The clinical features of superior vena cava obstruction include shortness of breath, headache, chest pain and distension of the veins of the face and upper limb which causes plethora of the arms and the face. Superior vena cava obstruction can be assessed clinically by performing Pemberton's test. There are many images in the internet about this sign. You can google them and see for yourself. In eliciting the sign, the patient is asked to raise both arms above their head. A positive test is indicated if facial edema or cyanosis occurs after approximately one minute. 